Hello and welcome. Today we're going to build an AMD gaming PC. Now this is the stuff we're going to be using. That was a Wi-Fi adapter. This is an OCZ uh, solid state drive. We have the Arctic Cooling Freezer Extreme Revision 2 for our CPU cooler. In here we have a hard drive. You just don't know it yet. Down here we have our graphics card, an AMD Radeon 6870 made by XFX. Uh, some LED lights, these will be included in a different video, but nonetheless they're going to be inside the PC. We have some Corsair Vengeance RAM, 8 gig worth of it, same stuff as I have in my PC. An AMD FX uh, 8120 bulldozer, CPU. In here we have a normal DVD burner, the kind I usually make laser pointers out of. You can see it just there. And the last thing in the box is the motherboard. And here it is. Gigabyte 990XA UD3. So here's the case we're going to be putting it all in. It's a CM Storm, made by Cooler Master, so I guess that's the CM. And inside we have the power supply. Now we're going to start building. So here is our motherboard. This is the first thing going into the case. And after this, I'm also going to take the power supply out. So inside the box, you've got various manuals. Here's an SLI bridge. You have the front back panel connector four SATA cables, and of course the motherboard itself. So we'll take the motherboard out of the box and we'll then move on to adding the back panel connector in. So it's just a piece of metal, it gets all the ports in line and helps keep the board stable. So pushing it in, it's quite tricky, but eventually you will get there. Depends largely on your case. We'll then add these little brass mounts, this is what the motherboard is mounted on. It keeps the motherboard from shorting out. And I've gotten pretty good at guessing where these go now by just looking at the motherboard, but you may need to put the motherboard in to measure up where they all go. So adding in the motherboard itself, you can hold the bottom of the CPU mount. And pushing it in, you need to make sure all the screw holes appear as screw holes, not just holes. And it aligns with the back panel connector. So screw the motherboard down, not too tightly, you do not want to break the board. And we're then going to add the processor into it. So you're going to wrestle with the box for a little bit. These tins are quite uh, hefty. There's a warranty information, the CPU with the sticker, and the CPU cooler fan. This is the stock fan. Let's take a look at it for a second, see why I'm not using it. So opening the box, we see a nice small, not even an 80mm fan. Uh, it's a lot better than what AMD used to make. It actually has some copper on it with heat pipes and a heat base. So it's not a bad fan. If you want to put this on an older processor, it'd be perfect. But for this one, I think we need something a bit more beefy. We're now going to add the CPU to the motherboard. First, make sure you're earthed, and then make sure there's no static on the CPU socket. Open up the plastic packaging, and you'll find the CPU and its sticker. Sticker, you can just get rid of for the time being. You can put it on the case later. And then you need to locate the triangle on your processor and on the motherboard. You can see here the triangle is in the bottom left corner and we're matching it up with the top left corner here. So removing the processor, and we're gonna match up the triangle to the triangle. And then once it's in, you do not push down, the processor just slots in, and pull the arm down and it's fitted. Now the next thing is the big task, it's fitting your CPU cooler. Anyone who's ever built a PC before will know that this is a hefty task. And here's the comparison to the stock CPU cooler. You can see this is a lot larger and it uses a 120mm fan to move air. So this did actually take me some time, so I've made a nice fast motion clip where I seem to be trying every angle possible to get the CPU cooler to fit. Now we're going to add the RAM, which is a nice easy task. It's the Corsair Vengeance, 8GB worth, and it's the same stuff I use in my PC. So we'll put one down there, open the other one up. And we're going to add this to RAM slot 1. So open it up, it's blue. Take note of that, you need to take note of the colours. So always add your first RAM slot to DIMM slot 1. Push it down, make sure it's fitted. And we're going to add the other one to the same colour. Now this is the channel system. So this one goes blue, white, blue, white. Whereas other boards can go blue, blue, white, white. The colours signify which channel it is. Now we're going to add the graphics card, which is... Again, one of the easiest things you can do. Taking it out of XFX complicated box, open it up, and we have a million manuals, of course, for every PC component. The driver CD, 
more manuals, more manuals, and this one even has a door hanger to let people know that you're gaming and you do not wish to be disturbed. We can now see the graphics card in its nice anti-static bag, and here it is without. So it's a very short graphics card, but it's also dual slot, so it's nice and cool, but it will fit in every PC, no matter what sort of hard drive arrangement you have. So fitting this, you just need to make sure your back panel ports are free, and you have a PCI Express x16 slot for best performance. And of course, secure it down to the case. We'll now add a Wi-Fi card into the desktop. So this is an Edimax 300 megabit per second Wi-Fi card. It has dual antenna. And all it needs is a PCI Express times one slot. However, we don't have any towards the bottom of the board and the one at the top would just be impractical for the graphics card. So we're gonna plug this in, a PCI Express times eight slot. So here it is. Dual antenna, as I said, has lights on it to show you that it's working, and we're going to put it in the times 8 slot down here. PCI Express slots aren't too fussy what you plug into them, as long as they have the right pin arrangement and are PCI Express compatible. So this is a times 1 card in a times 8 slot. We'll now move on to adding the CPU fan. You can't fit the fan whilst you're fitting the cooler, because it would obstruct everything, but you can add this in at any point. Just make sure the air is blowing the right way. Now take careful note of your motherboard manual as it tells you where to plug the case into. So this is your power button, your reset switch and your various lights. Here I'm plugging in the speaker with reference to the motherboard manual. So this tells me exact pin arrangement to plug everything in. We'll now move on to adding all the storage. So this is first our solid state drive. It's an OCZ Agility 3. And we need our laser guided scissors to open it as it comes in some horrible blister packaging. But once you've finally got it out of the packaging, you have your solid state drive. This is a very small but very fast hard drive without the hard disk. And we're going to have to add it in to a 2.5 to 3.5 inch bay converter. You need to secure it down to the drive converter. And I have my SATA ports pointing inwards so I keep the cables tidy. So we'll now add that to the case, like so. So we'll add the hard drive next. So we'll put the two rails onto it. And like before, we'll keep the SATA ports on the inside. Next, we'll add the DVD burner. So we'll take the drive bay out and we'll insert the DVD burner. It's as simple as that. Now I'll put the power supply back in, ready for it to cable up. And once you're done, you should end up with something like this. It's very tidy. All the cables are on the back of the case. So you can see they're going onto the other side, out of the way of the airflow. So we'll have a much cooler gaming computer. Next you'll want to screw in your Wi-Fi antennae and we'll move on to the performance aspect. Here's the Windows Customer Experience Index, it gives it a 7.6, whereas most things are 7.8 or 7.9. And here's the red LEDs I mentioned. If you want to know how I fitted these, you'll need to look at my next video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.